Number 3. Shotgun Jane Doe. On June 1st, 1987, two men picked up a female hitchhiker at a service station in White Pine, Tennessee. She told the men her name was Mary, though that could have been an alias. Sometime later that night, the three were fighting, and possibly drunk, outside of a home in Knoxville. Investigators believe that the fight was a ruse, an attempt to scare the homeowner, or draw them outside to investigate, so that the three could rob the home. Mary kicked the door of the home, awakening the resident, who called the police. As Mary attempted to open the door of the home, the owner fired a shotgun through the door, striking Mary in the side of the head and killing her instantly. The two men fled and were apprehended shortly afterwards, but were not able to provide any help in identifying the woman. She was probably in her mid-twenties, stood five foot five and weighed 120 pounds, and had medium-length brown hair and brown eyes. She had extensive healed injuries, which were consistent with a car crash or a fall from a significant height, including several steel pins in one leg. She had a healed scar on her abdomen, possibly from a C-section, and a tattoo of the letters B-H on her upper arm, which appeared to be homemade. Both a reconstruction of her face and an age regression showing how she may have looked during her teenage years were made, her DNA and fingerprints have been entered into national databases, and over 200 people have been excluded as being a match for her identity. Despite these efforts, Mary's, or Shotgun Jane Doe, as she is more commonly known, true identity remains unknown. Number 2. San Angelo Doe On March 31, 2005, an elderly man collapsed while browsing a thrift store in San Angelo, Texas. He was rushed to a nearby hospital but died shortly afterwards of what was most likely a heart attack. Authorities then set about identifying the man in order to notify his next of kin, but quickly ran into a mystery. Firstly, the man carried four different sets of ID in the names of Harold Freisinger, Roger S. Smith, Gerald Brown, and Peter Turner. Secondly, he apparently purposely damaged his fingerprints in order to render them untraceable. Due to the lengths that the man went to to conceal his identity, Authorities believe that he had a criminal past. His resemblance to former Boston Irish mob boss Whitey Bulger was noted, but Bulger's eventual arrest in California in 2011 put an end to that lead. Elmer Crawford, a man from Victoria, Australia, who murdered his pregnant wife and children in 1970 before vanishing, was also noted as bearing a resemblance to the man but DNA testing eventually proved that they were not the same person. The man was between 70 and 90 years old at the time of his death in 2005, stood between 5 foot 5 and 5 foot 7 inches tall, and weighed between 125 and 165 pounds. He had gray hair, blue or hazel eyes, and wore full dentures. He had no tattoos or scars. Speculation continues about his true identity, including theories that he may have been a Nazi fugitive or even the Zodiac Killer, perhaps the most infamous unidentified serial killer, but no promising leads have developed in recent years, and it's possible that the real identity of the San Angelo Doe will never be known. Number 1. Joseph Newton Chandler III July of 2002 was a hot summer month in East Lake, Ohio. A tenant in an apartment building complained to the landlord about a foul smell coming from the apartment which Joseph Chandler had rented since 1986. Upon entering the unit, the landlord made a grisly discovery, the dead and badly decomposing body of Chandler. Police arrived and quickly ruled the death a suicide. Chandler, who had recently been diagnosed with prostate cancer, had apparently chosen a quick death by gunshot rather than a slow death by disease. Investigators then began the task of locating Chandler's next of kin. His driver's license and social security number provided some details. He was 65 years old, was born in Buffalo, New York, 
and had $82,000 in his bank account, but had no will. His parents were Joseph Newton Chandler Sr. and Ellen Cabert, both deceased. Other than that, there was nothing to lead investigators to any living relatives. Chandler's apartment contained no photos, no address book, no correspondence from his past. On his rental application, he'd listed a sister living in Columbus, Ohio, as an emergency contact, but the address he provided for her led to a vacant lot. Investigators began digging deeper into his past and made a shocking discovery. The real Joseph Newton Chandler III had been dead since 1945. He was killed along with his parents in a car accident near Weatherford, Texas in December of 1945. He was eight years old. The deceased, the fake Joseph Newton Chandler, had assumed his identity in 1978 while living in Rapid City, South Dakota. It's believed that he was roughly the same age as the real Joseph Newton Chandler would have been, and that he may have known the real Chandler or his parents, although it's also possible that he simply read about the accident in the newspapers. No concrete trace of him prior to 1978 has ever been found, but it is suspected that he lived in California at some point and worked around, or possibly was in, the United States Navy. In 1979, after assuming his new identity, he moved to the Cleveland area, and for many years he worked for Lubrizol, a chemical manufacturing company, as an electrical engineer. He had no close friends, and rarely spoke to his co-workers. His apartment contained many homemade electrical gadgets, including several machines which produced white noise, which he apparently listened to for hours, and a device which automatically changed the TV channel when a commercial came on. In 1989, he sought treatment at a hospital for lacerations to his penis, which he claimed he received while attempting to masturbate with a vacuum cleaner. It's possible that he may have attempted to sexually assault someone who fought back, or that he injured himself while attempting to masturbate with another one of his homemade gadgets. It's also possible that he was telling the truth about the vacuum cleaner, as such injuries are not unheard of. The attending physician thought that he was older than his claimed age. He exhibited more eccentric behaviors. He once drove over 700 miles to an L.L. Bean store in Maine, only to immediately turn around and drive home because there were no parking spaces available in the store's parking lot. In a rare social outing, he attended a Halloween party dressed as Al Capone and spoke to no one the entire night. Interviews with his co-workers at Lubrizol provided a few interesting details. He once left work for several days after telling a co-worker that the people who were chasing him were getting closer. He told another co-worker that there was something he wanted to tell him one day, but whatever he was intending to tell this person, he either never got around to it or changed his mind. In 2016, there was a break in the case. Forensic genealogist Colleen Fitzpatrick ran Chandler's Y chromosome information through genetic genealogy databases, which indicated that his real surname was probably either Nicholas or Nichols. Unfortunately, this lead has still not led to his real identity. Law enforcement, and most online sleuths, believe that Chandler was a violent fugitive who was on the run since at least 1978, when he assumed his stolen identity. Other theories, however, cannot be ruled out. His likely real surname suggests Russian ancestry, leading some to speculate that he was a Cold War-era spy who decided he wanted out and assumed a new identity in the United States. His comments about people chasing him lend speculation to theories that he may have been on the run from either the mob or a cult. And like the San Angelo Doe, some suspect he may have been a Nazi fugitive or the Zodiac Killer. Whatever the case may be, as of the time of this video, we still have no idea who this eccentric, intelligent, mysterious man really was. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, please subscribe, like the video, and check back often for new uploads.